In this video, we're going to go through the configuration of PXGrid with Splunk so we can take action and contain threats. I'm going to start out by updating Ubuntu, installing the OpenSSL libraries, installing OpenSSL, and finally installing Java 8. Splunk's PXGrid client is Java-based, so some important things to know is that you should ensure that you have Java Development Kit 8 or higher installed. I touched on this briefly in my video on installing the ICE Splunk app, but I wanted to bring this up again. The reason that we're using Ubuntu instead of having Splunk installed on a Windows server is due to the fact that Windows doesn't support the encrypted key store needed for PXGrid operations. Now we'll just wait while Ubuntu updates. Next, we'll install the OpenSSL libraries. This might not be something that you need to do depending on the flavor of Linux that you're using, but I'm just going to go ahead and walk through it so you get a chance to see it in case you do need to install this. This would be how you would install OpenSSL using the apt-get command. In my version, I already have it installed, but I'm just showing you in case you need to do it on your own. The next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is install Oracle Java 8 on my server, which is the minimum I need to have in order to make PXGrid work. You can use a later version, though, if you wish. As we can see from the output, Oracle Java Development Kit 8 is now installed. Now we'll need to swing over to ICE to generate a PXGrid client certificate for Splunk. In my environment, I'm using a CA signed certificate for PXGrid, but I can still generate a self-signed PXGrid certificate from ICE, and it'll include the CA root certificate in the certificate chain. We'll start out by navigating to Administration and then PXGrid Services. Then we'll want to go to the Certificates tab. We want to generate a single certificate without a certificate signing request. Then we'll give the certificate a common name, which I'm going to call Splunk. Under the SAN, I'm going to put my Splunk IP address. Under Certificate Download Format, we're going to choose PEM. And then I'm going to give the certificate a password, which has to be at least eight characters. In this case, I'm going to choose Ice is Cool. It'll download as a zip file. I'm going to go ahead and unzip it next. The next thing I'm going to want to do is move these files over to my Splunk Ubuntu server. I'm a big fan of WinSCP, so I'm going to go ahead and just use that. I'm going to go ahead and grab all of these and just move them right over to my home folder. For my SSH session, I can list the files in my home folder, and I should see all of those files listed. Yep, there they are. Using the cat command, we're going to concatenate the ICE services and root certificates into one certificate. You would not include the actual PXGrid client certificate that's named Splunk 10.1.100.20 in this. If we list the files in the directory, we can now see our newly combined certificate. Next, we're going to go ahead and create a PKCS12 file from the PXGrid client certificate using OpenSSL. 
To keep it simple, I'm going to use ice is cool for all my passphrases in this configuration. Once again, if we list the files in the directory, we can see our newly created file, which we named mac.p12 in this case. Now we're going to import the pkcs file into a Java key store, which we'll name mac.jks. And once again, I'm using my ice is cool passphrase. Now when we list the files in the directory, we'll see our new Java key store, mac.jks. As you can see from the message above, it's warning me that the JKS key store is using a proprietary format and it's recommending me to go to pkcs12. I'm going to go ahead and do so. As you can see, it gives us the commands to use, so I'm going to type it exactly as it recommends. Next, we're going to change the combined root certificate we created from PEM to DER format using OpenSSL. Once that's completed, we're going to import the root certificate into a new Java trusted key store we're going to create. I'm going to call it caroot1.jks. And once again, I'm using my ice is cool passphrase to keep consistent. We're going to type in yes to trust this certificate. Next, we're going to import our PXGrid client certificate into our Mac JKS key store. It will say that the certificate already exists in the key store. Import it anyways. We'll then import our combined CA certificate into our Mac JKS key store. We're going to then import the certificate titled Certificate Services Root CA into our CA Root 1 JKS Trusted Key Store. We'll then import our Security Demo AD Cert into our CA Root 1 JKS Key Store. This is the root certificate for my PKI infrastructure for my lab. After that's all completed, we'll want to move both key stores to the proper directory that the Splunk ICE app will reference. You might have Splunk installed somewhere different in your environment, but I have it installed under OP and then Splunk. The nested folder you'd move these files to would be nested under that, which would be etc. apps, Splunk TA Cisco ICE, bin, and then certs. Once those are moved over, there's a script we can use to test out to see if these key stores work with ICE. I'll include the syntax for the script in my blog post, but I'll also walk through it here. We'll type in java-jar and then reference a test jar file called pxgrid underscore search jar nested in the Splunk ICE app folder. We'll then put the ICE IP address and a test client name in. We'll then reference our key stores in the key store passwords, which is ice is cool in my case. At the very end, we'll put a random IP address and quarantine underscore IP. If this is successful, we'll be able to see a successful connection state to ice. It looks like a successful connection, but we can also swing over to ice under administration, PXGrid services and see the new client subscribe to PXGrid services. The next thing we need to do is make some additional configurations to Splunk. Next to apps, click on the gear sign. You'll want to find the Cisco ICE add-on and click Setup next to it. 
With ICE, you have the ability to utilize the RESTful API workflows or PXGrid workflows. If I wanted to use the RESTful API, I would define the ICE IP address, choose ICE 2.0 from the dropdowns, and check the box for enabling the workflow for each EPS session. I'd also have to make sure that the RESTful API is enabled in ICE by navigating to Administration and Settings in the ICE dashboard. I won't be configuring it on the ICE side in this video since I'm mostly focusing on the PXGrid workflows here, but I'll just enable these workflows so I can show you later where they, they show up at. The PXGrid setup is the most important part here. Under Host, you would define your IP or FQDN for ICE. Username is the name that will show up for this PXGrid client. I'm going to go ahead and use Splunk here. I'm going to also have to define my key store file paths. Mac JKS will go in the first field and CA root 1 JKS will go in the second. I'll also need to make sure that I put the password in for those key stores, which is ICE is cool in my case. Further down, I would enable the PXGrid workflows by checking each box. Then we'll click Save to save our changes. The next thing we'll have to do is modify some of the workflows. We'll navigate to Settings, Knowledge, and then Fields to do so. We can see the EPS REST workflows on top. We're not going to modify those since we're not focusing on REST in this video. Instead, we're going to clone two workflows. The first one we're going to clone is PXGrid Quarantine by IP workflow. We're going to name this ANC Quarantine by Framed underscore IP underscore address. Under the label, we're going to change it to ANC quarantine by framed underscore IP underscore address. And then we'll change the variable to framed underscore IP underscore address. This is very important. We'll also change it under apply to only the following fields and under the search string. The reason that we're changing this is that the IP address of the endpoint shows up at under framed underscore IP underscore address in the syslog packet sent from ICE to Splunk. So we need this to be correctly populated to grab the correct IP address to quarantine. Next, we're going to go ahead and clone the PXGrid unquarantine by IP workflow and do the exact same thing. We'll name this ANC unquarantined by framed underscore IP underscore address. We'll also populate the framed underscore IP underscore address in the same places that we did with the last workflow. After clicking save, we should see our two new workflows showing up. As I stated in a previous video, quarantine is just a label that's applied in ICE. So the next thing that we're going to have to do is create a policy, an authorization policy, that does something with this quarantine label. Splunk still uses Adaptive Network Control 1.0, so instead of putting it under ANC status when quarantined, it actually changes the EPS status, which is bound to confuse since we're not using the EPS workflows. It's not a big deal, but I do need to make a slight change to my global exception authorization policy, and instead I'll add an OR condition for EPS status equals quarantine. This policy was created previously in our StealthWatch PXGrid video, so if you need to review that, just go back and watch that video. We'll go ahead and save those changes and navigate back to Administration and then PXGrid services in ICE. We're going to remain on this page in ICE and go back to our Splunk dashboard to quarantine something. I'll also pull up my 802.1x endpoint and do a recent authentication for us to see in the syslogs.
Now that that's logged in, we'll do a search in Splunk for 5200, which is a syslog message for past authentication. So we'll just take this first one here and click on the arrow to the left to expand our view. Under Event Actions, we should see an action for ANC Quarantine, and we'll use that. This will send a signal over to ICE to apply the quarantine label to this IP address. Based on our policy, this should kick the endpoint off of the network, which we can see under the live logs. We can now see in the live logs that our authorization policy for this endpoint has changed to quarantine. Let's go back to the Splunk search and search for 5200 again. This time, under Event Action, we're going to choose ANC Unquarantine by IP address. This will send a signal back to ICE to remove that quarantine label, and at that point, the regular authorization policy for this endpoint type should be applied. There we go, we now see that it has the administrator's authorization policy instead of quarantine. One other important thing to note is if we go back to administration and PXGrid services, we now see the Splunk client showing up under PXGrid clients. And with that, we've come to the end of the video and thank you for bearing with me through this.